Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a late night insight video or quick hit video on a Roja Dove. And this is a fragrance that only came out last year and already they've released a pure parfum version of it. Uh, but I have to give a special thank you before we get started to a friend who um, was actually the very first person to send me something when I started my YouTube channel. I think I probably had 50 subscribers, if that, and he reached out and said, hey man, I want to send you some stuff, and he very kindly sent me some samples, and some of those early Roja reviews were based on his samples. If you remember, um, you know, I did one, Herod's Pour Homme, and a couple of the others that came in these decants, they were from him. They were from uh, D.L. Qualia, so a special shout out to you, mate, wherever you are. I hope you are doing well, and I uh, hope you're happy and healthy and all is great in your life. But um, he also sent me some more later on. So he did a round two. And one of the samples he sent me uh, is Roja's Apex. And so this fragrance is divisive. I'll tell you that from the very get-go. There are people in Fragcom that have absolutely just threw up all over the scent, said it's uh, pathetic and it's, uh, you know, not worthy of the Roja name and, and that it's uh, kind of a cop-out, a sell-out by the brand. Uh, there's some rough stuff online about Apex. And so I've been testing this for a little bit. I've had a chance to wear it to bed a couple times. And this is maybe the second or th maybe even the third time. And so I put a little bit of a dent in the atomizer, you can see. Um, so it's not my first experience with this, but I've only had it on my skin for a couple hours today. But I've got some experience with what Apex is like. And I've had some people ask me to do this video. And so I figured enough sitting on it i um, going to hop off it like a cactus, and we're going to talk about this. So Apex is um, uh, interesting because the one of the reasons that it caught some slack is the bottle. And the bottle actually uh, is written almost like uh, an axe. You know, if you've ever seen axe uh, script, uh, it, it's easy to kind of make fun of the Apex bottle. And I wasn't a fan of the bottle, uh, but it's all about the juice for me. So it does have a advertising campaign that went along with it, with the apex, you know, it showed things like uh, the scales of a snake or, you know, the um, the feathers of a, of a eagle or, you know, this going on this apex predator. And finally, it ends with sort of the eye of a human, a green, that green apex eye of a human uh, is, is really what it ends with. And... Um, I am not the biggest fan of the advertising campaign, but um, it does have a, uh, it has a saying as well, and, and it Apex, Eau de Parfum, and I think it's the exact same saying for the uh, Parfum as well, unearth the essence, that's the tagline for Apex, unearth the essence, and I'll read you a little bit of the description, I'll, I'll read you a little bit of the Roja's musings, if you will, and then we'll talk about what I get from it and, and my thoughts. So. Uh, it says, celebrating the natural wonders of the world and all who roam it. Apex is fresh, fruity, sheep record with spiritual and sensual undertones. A zesty citrus blast opens the Apex experience with a breath of fresh air as the sunny sensation of mandarin and juicy pineapple lead the pack, encouraging a positive state of mind and inspiring us to achieve our goals. Grounding our energy to the earth, a natural Shepra base surrounds patchouli and fir balsam with the green tones of galbanum, cypress, and oak moss to create a truly outdoors environment. As the sacred materials of sandalwood and frankincense pay homage to the ancient ingredients the earth has given us, connecting us to our primal energy, primal, the animalic effects of leather, ambergris, and musk lay in the shadows, bringing their sensual impulse to this highly addictive new fragrance. So, um... That's the description. Roja's musings say, harnessing the infinite power of nature, Apex connects us to Earth and its spiritual energies, unleashing instincts and abilities that lay dormant within each of us, grounded in inspiration from the world's Apex animals. This creation was designed to unearth your connection to nature's most powerful creatures, pushing you to challenge your limits and open your eyes to new opportunities. Only when we embrace our connection to nature and our innermost instincts can we reach the apex of our potential becoming the best version of ourselves so there you have it um so what is the scent like well uh it's a sheepra and it is a fruity sheepra 
uh, but it's nothing like Aventus. But it is modern, and um, the fact that it's a Shepra and the fact that it's a Rosia, I actually like this. I am. Um, I have enjoyed getting to know this, uh, and I um, will tell you kind of what I think. So here's here's my thoughts. So this opens up with sort of this vintage masculine accord of a couple notes. So instantly you're going to get cypress, and you're going to get a little bit of basil, and you're going to get this very posh mix of citruses, cinnamon, and woods, okay? And basically... Um, Cypress adds this sort of evergreen-like smell to the fragrance, this sort of herbaceous, uh, evergreen type of smell. But it's very well blended when you first when you first spray. However, and I've said it before, and it's very true with Apex as well, that Roja's uh, strength, his number one strength, is that... Doesn't seem open. Ah, okay. So Roja's number one strength is that he um, he has the ability to take fragrance compositions from the past, DNAs from the past. He has a huge knowledge of fragrances gone by, uh, and he has the ability to Roja them up, is what I call it. He Rojas them up. He finds a way to add modern notes that sort of adds this contemporary um, feel to an otherwise very vintage and classical composition, Okay. Fragrances that our fathers and forefathers, grandfathers would have worn happily. He takes those compositions and he makes, almost brings them into the modern age, if you will. But they always keep a little bit of the old classical style about them, right? And so what they've added to Apex, first thing you're going to get on top of that cypress note, and the cypress will apparently remind you a little bit of Tom Ford's Italian cypress, which I've never smelled before, but there are some other fragrances that actually inspired Tom Ford's Italian Cypress, which we will talk about here in a little bit, that this reminds me of. And um, so what they've added to Apex to bring it into the 21st century is basically this uh, juicy pineapple, okay? And the juicy pineapple is one of the first sort of modern notes that your nose will, will encounter whenever you first smell Apex. Uh, but the Juicy Pineapple smells nothing like Aventus, so just get that out of your head right now. It's absolutely nothing like Aventus. Uh, it's just a pineapple note. In fact, uh, Pierre Bourdon was playing with pineapple notes in something like 28 or 30-something fragrances before uh, his pupil, Jean-Christophe Hérault, ended up um, ended up creating Aventus. Sorry, I have the TV on because the, um, uh, the Stanley Cup playoffs are on, and, and hockey is one of my favorite sports. And so if the lighting in the room changes on my face, it's because the TV is on in the background. Usually I turn it off, but not for the playoffs. Uh, and even though my star is lost, I still love watching the other teams play. Toronto's in overtime right now, and so I'm cheering for them for Anuj. For Anuj and for Eugene, I know they're big Toronto fans. So as long as they're not playing the stars, I can cheer for them. Okay, so back to um, this, this juicy pineapple. So you're going to get this pineapple that really brings the fragrance into the 21st century. But other than the pineapple note, when you first smell, this is going to smell very vintage to you. But in a, it's weird to say vintage in a modern way, but it is. It's, it's a vintage classical DNA that will remind you of fragrances from the 70s and 80s and even early 90s. Uh, but it's it's brought into the current age using some of that these more modernized notes, if you will. Uh, and there's a couple vintages that instantly jump out. So number one is this. And if you know this, the pinched red blood cell bottle, if you will, uh, this is Halston's Z14. And uh, this is a fragrance that basically set the world on, on fire. Um, the amount of bottles of Z14 that were sold in, in the mid to late 70s are outrageous. I mean, you think of uh, Studio 51 and, and that party scene, and you think of um, what uh, Halston was as an, as an icon and as a designer. You know, he uh, designed hats for, uh, you know, very influential figures like um, Jackie Kennedy, and, you know, he was like an American rock star designer. And this is in the 70s and 80s when parties were different than they are today. Uh, the party scene was different, 
and they, you know, they really let loose, and he was truly a rock star anywhere he went. Um, and this fragrance inspired many people, but most of all, it, in, it inspired people like Tom Ford. Tom Ford basically wanted to be uh, Halston. He wanted to be what Halston was, what, you know, the, a modern day Halston. And so amongst Roja's generation, you know, because I think Roja and Tom Ford are probably similar ages, I would guess. I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing they're probably from a similar generation, let's say. If they're not the same age, they're, let's say, within a decade of each other, right? And my guess is that the influence that Halston had on Tom Ford is a very similar influence that he had on Roja. And Roja loving to kind of take these uh, vintage fragrances and modernize them, uh, I think he picked the exact correct fragrance to do that with. But if you look at um, some of the notes and in something like uh, Halston Z14, you will get a very good approximation of what you're going to smell in, in something like Apex. It's very, very close, but imagine it with that Roja twist. And Roja did stay true to his style on this one, I have to say because there's a large dollop of cystus, labdanum. Roja loves labdanum, and so do I. Actually, I think labdanum is one of those ingredients that uh, is so beautiful, it can be almost a perfume into, uh, into and of itself. Um, if you've ever kind of touched labdanum resinoid, it's very, very sticky, almost like spider web sticky. Like if you grab it with your fingers and open them up, you'll see like strings, it'll stick to your fingers for days, even if you wash them, it's very hard to get it off. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why with the Oak Moss ban, um, you know, many perfumers and houses started to use labdanum to try to affix fragrances to the skin because Oak Moss was used as an affixer back in the day. Uh, like this, for example, is a vintage bottle of Halston Z14. You can see right there it says Halston Fragrances Inc. The newer bottles say EA for Elizabeth Arden. Uh, and I think there was maybe even something in between Halston Fragrances and Elizabeth Arden. Um, I forget who, who the name of that company was, but I think there was something in the middle too. But in a nutshell, those older fragrances had bigger oak moss bases to try to, you know, affix it to the skin. And since they can't do that anymore, they try to find alternatives. So they use patchoulol and these other things, uh, labdanum and... Um, and the labdanum is one of Roja's favorite ingredients. You find it over and over and over in his, um, in his releases. And there's a huge dollop of it here. And what I find interesting is in, in a couple of the Rojas, I've noticed it to be true. And it's true, with, um, it's true with Apex as well. Is that sometimes it almost feels like he will invert the note listing. So what I mean by that is notes that are... Um, you know, notes that are uh, usually found in the top are sometimes found in the base. Uh, and so, for example, there's a note that uh, I've discussed on a couple of the other Roja videos that I've done, and it's called Galbanum. And Galbanum is basically this um, sort of sticky resin that uh, adds this very green, earthy, gummy-like feel to a fragrance. But it's very, it was very popular in the 70s, especially amongst women's fragrances. So if you've ever smelled some of those green, feminine fragrances from the 1970s, things like uh, Private Collection by Estee Lauder or Chanel's number 19, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, those are all-time great galbanum fragrances of the past. And there were also some galbanum fragrances that turned up in masculine releases. Like, for example, uh, here's one right here, just off the top of my head. If you know this, this is Aramis's Devon. This is a beautiful take on a galbanum masculine Chipra. Galbanum in the top, very green. Oh, it's so, so, so good. Uh, I love, I love, absolutely love Bernard Chant's work. And I'm sure Roja does too. But, um, you know, what, what's interesting though is many of these fragrances that you find, number 19, uh, Private Collection, Ar Aramis, Devon, uh, I'm going to show you a modern one when the video's over as a potential replacement for Apex if you're going for the style that uses Galvanum. All, almost always they're in the top. With Roja though, you find the Galvanum in the base. And um, it's, it's interesting to me um, because... 
I think it's part of this DNA that they created. And you kind of saw it with the uh, Middle Eastern line that he did. Some of those Middle Eastern line note listings are very similar. You, you know, you take something like United Arab Emirates or Bahrain, or you take something like um, uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia or Sultanate of Oman, and you find very close similarities with just a few things maybe tweaked here and there. And I've seen a very similar note listing uh, to Apex in some of the other Roja fragrances where you get this cashmere in the base. Roja loves using cashmere. It's, um, it's, it's one of the other things that um, Roja has done to kind of modernize the fragrance besides the pineapple is this, uh, this cashmere note. And um, I actually did a video on a fragrance from the House of Zerzhov very recently called from the Oud Stars collection. I actually did a review uh, based on a sample that um, uh, Joanna Huttonstone sent me, and it was very kind of her to do that. And but I was able to talk about it again, just like Apex. I don't have it in my collection, but it, this this kind of generosity from the community kind of allows me to to discuss it on on YouTube. And so um, that had a big cashmere note, and cashmere um, kind of adds this warmth to a fragrance. And uh, if you ever hear Roja describe his personal scent, his $3,500 a bottle stuff, Roja's uh, Hout Lux, as it's known, but I think it's just called Roja. I think that's literally the name. It's in the Hout Lux collection, but it's known as Roja. He says it's like a Sheepra wrapped in cashmere, like this silky cashmere, if you will. And uh, cashmere is, uh, or cashmeran, uh, it's apparently a very hard ingredient to work with. Uh, I know uh, Frederick Mall and Maurice Roussel worked with uh, Kashmiran. I, I'm Dante Bra. If you ever smelled Dante Bra from, from Frederick Mall, you'll get an idea of Kashmiran. If you've ever smelled that uh, Alcott from Zerzhov, you'll kind of get an idea of the, of the Kashmiran. But that's one, one ingredient that he, he uses in the base with the galbanum in Apex. The other thing that he uses is rum. And rum adds this more modern vibe to a fragrance. In fact, it's a trend that's been going on in the fragrance world for over a decade now to take these um, sort of, uh, you know, flankers of vintage fragrances gone in the past and add a, add a liqueur note to try to modernize it. So, for example, if you smelled something like um, Azaro Por Homme Intense from 2015. Here, I'll just, I'll, we'll, we will, uh, we'll go off the cuff today and I'll grab some things. So... Azaro Porom Intense. This came out in 2015, I believe. And, you know, the original Azaro Porom came out in 78. And so what they've done is they've added a, a liqueur note. I don't know if it's rum, but um, some sort of liqueur note is what they've added here. Um, and to, to, to modernize it. And uh, Cartier did something very similar when it comes to... Um, if you've ever smelled Pasha de Cartier Parfum from 2019, the original Pasha EDT came out in 92. Pasha de Cartier Parfum, the, uh, the, the Parfum, the flanker, the more modernized version, which adds that liqueur note to it, came out in 2019. Uh, and so it's a, it's a trend that's been going on for a while. So outside of the pineapple, the other modernization that Apex does is it adds this, um, this rum note. And uh, the rum has an added effect, though. It has an added effect of reminding me of the fragrance that I think this most reminds me of. Yes, there's a, there's a little bit of Halston Z14 in there. Z14 is like the grandfather. But Z14 influenced other fragrances over the years, too. And there's a fragrance from the house of Valentino. And I've talked about this fragrance before. This fragrance was actually one of the few bottles in my collection that I did not buy with my own money. A friend uh, from the community actually sent this to me very kindly. His name is Justin. He goes by Justin the Czar now. And um, this is Vendetta Por Homme by the house of Valentino. And Vendetta Por Homme has this Z14 Italian Cypress vibe. But what they've done is they've added some lavender and um, vervain neroli with clove, geranium, jasmine, labdanum, oak moss, patchouli, and a note of what they call bay rum, okay? So bay rum. And so this is, I think, the closest thing that you're going to come to, to what I've smelled anyways. And obviously I haven't smelled anything, but I have smelled a lot of things. And um, 
you know, that is probably the closest thing in my brain that Apex really comes to. But one of the things that I've noticed is it has this opening that, uh, quite frankly, I really enjoy. I like it. I love vintage fragrances, number one. Number two, I love Shepra's, so it's right in my wheelhouse. And number three, I like Roja's work. I have given him a hard time, and rightly so. I mean, some of the stuff is, um, he deserves to be given a hard time on. I think he knows that. Uh, the prices are, are outrageous on some of the stuff. And, uh, but I, obviously, I still pay it. And, um, I have a lot of Roja's in the collection. Um, and I've got an entire playlist dedicated to Roja. If you want to see some of my other reviews and my thoughts on his work, you can go check it out under the Roja Dove playlist. Um, I've been very hard on him on some facets, but in other side of things, I do really enjoy his work. You know, there's very few people nowadays that love vintage fragrances as much as I do that are out there. And I really could count Roja amongst one of them. I mean, he has a true love and affinity for vintage fragrances and it shines through. There's no getting around it. Um, and, and so, you know, that is, um, that's also something that you have to kind of take into account on this. Um, and so as I continue to smell the fragrance dry down though, one thing that would stop me from buying this, there's really one thing that stops me from buying this, and that's that it turns slightly more and more designer-like. And so I'm thinking in my head, you know, the reason why, this is a brave release as far as the opening goes, I'll tell you that, because many uh, modern younger kids who are, let's say, hip to the hip to the Roja brand now, let's say, um, they may smell this and go, you know, and remember, modern perfume sniffing is all about the first five seconds. Very few people give anything a chance to dry down and evolve. Some Rojas go through three or four different transitions. I mean, you know, you could say hour one to two is like this, hour three to four is like this, hour six to seven is like this. People don't give perfumes the chance to transition and evolve like they used to do during the vintage days, okay? You know, this was something people bought and wore and lived in and, you know, but they they trusted the perfumer and they sort of, um, you know, they didn't just spray and judge, right? It was a, it was a journey throughout the scent evolution. And um, the, the first hour is where it really smells the most vintage to my nose. It's really where you get most of the uh, Vendetta, Halston Z14, Italian Cypress, whatever, you know, I would say Vendetta Pour Homme is probably the closest comparison, but whatever comparison you want to make, the first hour is where you're going to get most of that. And then that's where you, once it continues to dry down, it's going to smell more and more like a modern niche fragrance. So you're gonna get more and more of that cashmoran, more, you're gonna get a little bit more of that rum, a little bit of tobacco, a little bit of LME, and a little bit of this sort of musky, leathery-like smell. And I must admit, I like the leathery-like smell, but it does smell, it starts to go slightly more and more into this designer. It's not that it falls apart in the base or anything like that. I'm not saying it falls apart in the base. I'm just saying that it, it goes away from the more daring vintage. I don't know if you can count something that, you know, smells like a fragrance from 1991 or 1976 daring, but maybe for a niche house nowadays, I guess it kind of is a daring release to release something like this. But vintage, uh, vintage fragrances have always been sort of the um, starting point for many Rojas, okay? Some people say Roja's a clone house, that he just clones vintage fragrances. Uh, I wouldn't go that far, but there are lots of hints to fragrances of the past. Some of them, vintage Guerlain's, where he worked for over 20 years. Um, and some of those comparisons to some of those vintage Guerlain's are very, very close. Um, and, and so I still think this is a brave release though, but as it dries, it begins to get more and more, I begin to get less and less impressed with what I'm smelling. Uh, and I will offer an alternative. Okay. And the alternative I'm going to offer was actually given to me for free. This bottle was given to me for free by a friend, but it has no bearing on my thought of the fragrance. If I hated it, I would tell you I hate it. And because I have nothing to gain. Um, you know, there's, there's, I get nothing if you go buy this fragrance from him. There is, uh, absolutely zero gain for me. And I, uh, you know, I would just never sacrifice my, uh, 
Uh, my integrity is the number one thing that I always try to protect. That's why I am very cautious of ever teaming up with any uh, group, uh, any group, whether it's a discounter or, you know, or could you imagine a RAM promo code? Um, but this is, I think, the fragrance of 2023, my opinion. My opinion, this is the fragrance of 2023. And this is an Antoine Lee creation and it has galbanum in the top and it reminds you a little bit of a green masculine sheeper as well with some smoky elements. This is a fragrance called Desandras by the brand Less Up Straits, that's Eugene's brand. Um, this brand and this fragrance actually may have been one of them that won a Base Notes award. Uh, and this, this came out early in 2023, like the first couple days of 2023. And so this is called Desandras. And Desandras is um, maybe my favorite from the brand. It's very, very good. Um, and there are actually some hints of Aramis by Devon in here. But the difference is, is that this... So, whereas Apex sort of feels like a modern niche fragrance, try pretending to be a vintage... This actually smells like a vintage fragrance. For vintage fragrances, for vintage fragrance lovers, uh, you are not going to find much better modern perfume that fits our taste than this. Antoine Lee created what could amount to be a masterpiece, seen as a masterpiece in the future. Um, I, I think Le Dule Exquise is my favorite rose patchouli of all time. And I think that this may actually be one of my favorite masculine sheepers of all time. They created something amazing in the ingredients provided by Remy. I mean, they're on another level. I think they're actually better. I think the ingredients in here are better than here. My, my two cents. Just my two cents. This is still good, though. I'm not bashing this. I don't want you guys to think that I'm bashing Apex. I know Apex got a lot of people to bash it. There were a lot of bashers of Apex, but I wouldn't be one of them. I would wear this. I would have no problem wearing Apex. Um, I just, you know, in the back of my head, I think I would always know there's better options is the problem, is the thing. Um, and I think that, I think that Roja made this in a world where there were almost no competitors for this style. There was no, there's no one doing what Roja was doing, to be honest with you. There's no niche house going out and creating these vintage style um, fragrances with very high quality modern materials, right? Now there is. That's the problem, is now there is. And so when this came out in 2022, uh, this brand hasn't hadn't even launched yet, I don't believe. They launched uh, closer to the middle uh, or maybe like uh, September, October of 20, I forget exactly what when they launched. I think it might've been September of 22 or something like that with uh, La Dule Exquise and then Belle Homme, which um, I don't own that one. Uh, La Dule Exquise, I ended up buying with my own money, but this one is the one that I would recommend if you're wanting that green sort of galvanum feel. Um, it's also very smoky and very woody and um, Desandras has a birch tar, like this tarry, like, um, you know, almost like you put your hand on a tree and you get that sap stuck to your hand. So while, um, while this actually, this apex may actually be easier for a, I don't want to say novice, but let's say a beginner, somebody who, um, is newer to the fragrance hobby, but maybe they want to take the next step. Maybe they want to go one step up from Blue de Chanel and Sauvage and stuff like that, right? Um, and so they try Apex. I think this may be easier to swallow than this, but if you're someone that has an experienced nose and you are someone who's tired of smelling things that smell the same, you want something new and different and challenging and interesting, I think you could fall in love with this. Desandra's is full bottle worthy, I think. Smoky, resinous, green, God, the ingredients in this, man. Oh, there's a little bit of high African hyrax as far as the animalics go. And that's where, you know, Roja says there's a little bit of ambergris and, and he uses, you know, he uses the um, animalics very carefully. Roja does. It's, it's a very carefully, you know, it's, it's more, I think he uses those animalics more for the masses. This is more for the kind of crazy, um, 
you know, vin uh, I was going to say vintage fragrance, but maybe even just fragrance lovers, maybe just fragrance lovers in general. Uh, if you have sort of a wider palette and you like smelling things that are off the beaten path a little bit, but um, are, are sort of art in a bottle, this is what I would recommend. So yes, um, that's that's sort of my take on on Apex. I like it. Not bashing it. I um I I would wear it, but I don't think I like it enough to go out and spend my own hard-earned money on a bottle. Is is the thing. So um, but I would like to try the Pure Parfum too. That came out six months or so after the original Apex was released. This is the Eau de Parfum. So I would also I would not mind trying the uh, Pure Parfum one day too. But um, Yes, very interesting stuff. If you have experience with Apex, do let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, you know, liking and subscribing and sharing your thoughts in the comments and all that stuff definitely helps the channel and it helps other like-minded individuals find us because we're just getting started. I really truly feel like there's a whole world of people out there that are just sort of waiting to find our little fragrance town. Um, and I, I feel blessed and honored that you guys kind of let me be the mayor of it. It's a, it's a privilege and it's a responsibility that I take very seriously. So thanks for watching everybody. Hope to see you in the comments. Cheers guys. And I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.